Jones. Death from the Past, starring Jane Wyatt. Beg your pardon. Hmm? Oh, yes? Is, is that your newspaper lying there on the park bench? Why, yes, it is. May I look at a moment, please? Well, if you wish, of course. Here, I'll move over. Sit down. Thank you. Well, there you are. Uh, I hope you don't get me forward. I'll only be a minute. Oh, take as much time as you like. Here, will you roll yourself a cigarette? What? Oh, no thanks. Sorry, I can't offer you a tailored one. Oh, quite all right, thank you. Out of a job, hmm? Yes, but don't tell me I look that desperate. No, I... Well, I uh, notice you've turned to the help-wanted columns. Yes, but somebody seems to have been there ahead of me. These ads have set me almost up with pencil. Maybe you can say that again. I was lucky even to find a pencil. Oh, you too. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Nobody needs to feel sorry for me. I'll get along. You've been to all these places you've marked here in this column? Sister, I've been there and then so. And you didn't get one of them? No, one. Why, look at the soles on my shoes. Here, look. Those are yesterday's want ads I'm walking on. How long have you been out of work? Oh, I don't know. About ten weeks. First, I had a lot of dough. I thought I was a wise guy. I wouldn't have any trouble getting another job. I was wrong. I dropped all my money, and I've been sleeping here on this park bench for the past three weeks. Then do you eat? Whenever I can. Today, I'm all right. I got a chance to make a couple of Iron Men yesterday. Iron Men? Bucks, dollars. Oh. You, uh, been around town much? Well, I've been here about two weeks. I came up from Sandville. You have people here? No. My father and stepmother live in Sandville. I, well, my stepmother and I have never been anything more than barely civil to each other. Oh, I get it. So you come here to get a job. No, well, I come here to get a job. How much money you got? Well, I... I really don't think that's anyone to pay. Oh, bother. You've got to be formal about it. My name's Mark Matthew. Mine's Luke John. Oh, oh, I'm serious. My name is Mark Matthew. I was named after the two gentlemen who helped write the Bible. Well, my name's Mary Billings. Well, Miss Billings, I'm mighty pleased to know you. Now that we're thoroughly acquainted and completely good friends, you tell me when you ate last. Oh, I'm all right. You look hungry. Oh, yes, I I guess I am. Join me for a hamburger? With onions? As you like, and a cup of coffee. Is that a date? Mary, I... Well, I'm sorry I can't buy you a 35-cent blue plate. I'd love a hamburger, Mark. Then it's a deal. Okay, Mr. Matthew, it is a deal. Another hamburger, Mary? No, thanks. Two's plenty. You shouldn't have made me that second one. I'm sure you can't afford it. Oh, I know where I can make a dollar or so tomorrow. I'll buy some cigarettes if you don't think you can roll one. No, thanks, no. And don't buy any. I really don't smoke much. Hey, you're a nice girl to know. Inexpensive. (laughs) I I really don't know why I'm letting you do this for me. I'm not in the habit of... Oh, I know, I know. Neither am I. But my Irish mother taught me never to ignore a pretty young woman who is hungry. Say, you are pretty, you know. Well, I thought you were going to be different. Yeah, I'm different. I say I'm going to feed you hamburgers, and I feed you hamburgers. <laughs> oh, and good ones, too. Uh, don't I know they're good? I've been eating them for weeks. Well, I think I'll answer this ad. Hmm? Oh, say, did you drag that old beaten up newspaper in here with you? Certainly I did. I'm still looking for a job, even if my hunger has been temporarily satisfied. Well, if you can find a job out of that bunch, you're a better job hunter than I am. Well, you haven't tried this one. Someone's looking for a woman. Hmm. Sounds good? Mm-mm. Very. Listen. Wanted. Tenographer. If you are an ambitious, talented, and reasonably attractive young woman who can use the typewriter, the adding machine, and can write shorthand... Apply in person to see Mr. Gibson, Friday night, after midnight, 
Room 1313, Temple Building. Hmm. Uh, do you think you can fill the bill? Are you ambitious? I can use the typewriter. Are you talented? I can operate an adding machine. And uh, are you reasonably attractive? You told me you thought I am pretty, remember? <laughs> Besides, I also know how to write shorthand. Then apply for the job by all means. I think I will. But you know, I don't like to apply after midnight angle. Yeah. It is very unusual. Why at that time of night? Well, maybe it's a night job. Anyway, I'm going to have a try at it. Room 1313, Temple Building. Where's the Temple Building? On the other side of town. How far, Mark? Oh, about 10 or 12 miles. Oh. Hey, you need car fare. Here, take this half bar. Oh, Mark, I... Well, I'm not going to argue about it. I'll take it. And I'll return the money tomorrow night. I get a small check for my father tomorrow morning. That's all right, Mary. I'll meet you... Well, let me see. I'll... I'll meet you here in the park at the same bench, and I'll let you know how I come out about the job in the temple building. The temple building, all right. Awfully quiet in here. Dimly lighted. Nobody around. Not even a hall porter. Very strange place. Here. Here's the building directly. No, let's see. What is the man's name? Oh, yes, Gibson. Gibson, Gibson, Gibson. No, no Gibson listed here. His company's name is probably here, but. I don't know that name. Now, see, how does one get up to the 13th floor? Here's an open elevator, but there's no one to operate it. Oh. Well, this is the type you operate yourself. Just step in. Press the button, mark 13. The door is closed. And up we go. Oh, my. Better say a little prayer that I get this job. Amen. There. Here we are. My, it must be a night job. This entire floor is one huge office. Row after row of desks with people working at time. And brilliant lights everywhere. This city must be a big country. May I help you, Miss? Oh, yes, please. I've come in answer to the ad in the newspaper. Ad? Oh, advertisement. Yes. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. Uh, uh Mr. Gibson advertised for a young woman to do typing and, and shorthand. Here, I've cut out the ad. This is it. May I see it, please? Thank you. I see. Mr. Gibson failed to tell me he had inserted an advertisement in the B. Oh, but this isn't the time. I'm sorry, young lady. Mr. Gibson uses only the bees. You'll find his office right down this aisle, the first door to your left, room 1313. Thank you. Just knock on his door and he'll answer you. Yes, thanks. Okay. These people all seem very modern and yet they're like a trust acquaintance. Oh, can't they, they look old fashioned. Oh, here's the door. Uh, come in, please. Mr. Gibson? Yes, come in, please, and close the door. Thank you. Sit down, sit down, young lady. Don't just stand there. Yes, sir. I, uh, I've come about the job, sir. The one you mentioned in your ad in the Times? Times? I never ever advertised in anything but the B. You read my advertisement in the B, I'm sure. You want a stenographer? One who can type, use the adding machine, and take directions? Yes. I'm very ambitious, Mr. Gibson, and I feel that I can learn the work quickly. I'm easily taught. Good, good. I, uh, your ad asked for a moderately attractive girl. I, I'll try to be neat and tidy, sir. My dear young lady, if your qualifications are as you claim, I feel you'll do very nicely. Here, take this pencil, please, and this pad. There now. Are you ready to take a letter? Yes, sir. Address it, Mr. Hugh Lanning, 1501 Tower Building City. Dear Mr. Lanning, we have received your order for the office materials listed on your invoice, and I shall personally see to it that the items ordered are assembled, boxed, and shipped to you immediately. We are exceedingly thankful for your order, and we trust you will find our service up to its usual promptness and carefulness. 
If we may serve you again in the future, please be assured every attention will be given to your desires. Yours very truly, the Acme Office Supply Company by Jonathan Gibson. Is that that? Yes, sir. Now, when you type it up, please, and use that machine over there, you'll find paper in the drawer. Yes, sir. Uh, how old are you, young lady? Twenty-two. Hmm. Your name? Mary Billings. Uh, where were you born? In Kansas. Well, that's about 35 miles from here. Hmm. Are you ready to start work tonight if you prove satisfactory? Oh, yes. Uh, what salary will you expect? That'll depend upon the work, sir. You must know what's fair. Well, I say, uh, say $20 a week. So we say that to begin with. Then if I do more than $20 worth of work, I'll ask for a raise. It's my opinion that employees should be paid according to the amount of work they do. Hmm, true, young lady. <laughs> Quite true. Uh, what's your home address, please? 2122 Melrose. I'm only there temporarily. Will you see sign, Mr. Gibson? Yes. What? Sign what? The letter you gave me. It's mm -hmm. ready. Finished? Already? <laughs> Young lady, you're quite efficient. Let's see. Typing is neat. I like it. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I hope I may have the job. Yes, of course. But one thing, Miss, uh, uh Billings. Yes, sir? Your clothes, my dear. There, uh, shall we say, uh, a little too modern. Too modern? I, I thought them quite conservative. The neckline and the skirt length and the sleeves. I, I'm afraid, Miss Billings, you'll be compelled to wear a tight neck dress, long sleeves, and uh, a skirt to the ankles. Like, uh, like the others outside, I guess, sir? Yes, exactly. And the rouge and lipstick. We don't use cosmetics for the Acme Company, Miss Billings. Very well, sir. And the, uh, the short haircut. Bob, I believe it's called... You will let your hair grow out, Miss Billings. Meanwhile, you will add a switch to your hair. Yes, Mr. Gibson. Now, if you just step outside and speak to the young lady at the reception desk, she'll show your place to work and assign your duties. Mr. Gibson, I, I can't thank you enough. I, I work very hard, and I'll try to be a credit to your company. I'm sure you will, Miss Billings. May I tidy up your office before I take over my work? Tidy up my office? Well, yes, if you pardon me. You really could stand a little cleaning and dusting. So many cobwebs and dust everywhere. But these windows look a bit like as though they hadn't been washed in years. And your calendar needs changing, Mr. Gibson. My calendar? Yes, look. It says April 16th. This is January 16th. My dear girl, you're mistaken. This is the 16th day of April. And the calendar says 1912. That's right. This is 1912. But Mr. Gibson, this is 1942. And it's January, not April. My dear young lady, are you an earnest? Why, of course I am. This is the 16th of January, 1942. Oh, certainly. You must be jesting. No, Mr. Gibson, I'm not jesting. This is not 1912. It's 1942. I, I can't understand what would lead you to say a thing like that. Here. Here, young lady, this newspaper. Today. Now look at the date on it. April the 16th, 1912. There, you see? Gibson, you say this is today's newspaper? Of course, of course it is. Look at it yourself. Fresh ink. Smell it. Fresh paper. Hmm. Yes, you're right. But, but those headlines... Yes, a, a terrible disaster. The Titanic sank at sea on her maiden voyage. Yes, she hit an iceberg. A sad tragedy. That was 30 years ago. Long before I was born. What was that? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't feel very well these days. I... It, it wasn't important. Shall I take over my work now? Yes, if you will. We need your services very badly. Business is exceptionally good, and <laughs> I'll admit it's difficult to find a young woman with as much ability as you have. Thank you, Mr. Kitchen. I'll try to live up to your expectations. Mm -hmm. I feel certain you will, Miss Billings. If there's anything you don't understand, just ask the young lady at the front desk. Yes. Thank you, I shall. Thank you very much, Mr. Gibson. <laughs> Mr. Gibson said to see you about the work I'm to do here. Yes. You use desk number 27. That's over there, the one with the rose spot in the vase. Yes, I, I see it. I believe I'll let you work on the first of the month invoices. Here, use these invoice blanks. The books are on that metal table by your desk. Yes, thank you. How, uh, how do you want the invoices dated? May 1st, 1912. May 1st, 
1912. That's right. Better reach our customers the first day of May. And, um, did Mr. Gibson mention about your clothes? Oh, yes, he did. But he said I was to go to work now and, and take care of changing later. Very well. You'll find paper, pencils, and erasers in your bed. Thank you. I filled out this form for you. Tell me if it's correct. Name, Mayor Billings. Born at Stanville, age 22. Let's see, you were born in 1890 then, weren't you? That, that would be 22 years ago, wouldn't it? Your hours will be from midnight until 8 a.m. You may take time out at 4 o'clock for refreshment. One hour. If you have any questions about your work, please don't hesitate to ask me. Billings speaking. Yes, Mr. Gibson. In your office? Yes, sir. I'll come in immediately. Yes, Mr. Gibson. You sent for me? Yes. Uh, sit down, Miss Billings. <sighs> the dawn will be here soon, Miss Billings. I, uh, I don't have a watch. And there are no clocks in the office. You noticed? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. The dawn will soon be here. And all too soon. I haven't been here long, Mr. Gibson, but I enjoy the work I've done so far. Yes, uh, Miss Johnson reports you give all, all your attention to your work. She reports that you're extremely efficient. Oh, I'm glad, sir. I've tried to apply myself. Mm. Yes. You were just as I expected you would be. What was that, Mr. Gibson? I mean, uh, I could tell by the work you did in here for me that you would be quite capable. I hope you like me well enough to allow me to keep the job. I... I want you to go home now, my dear. You've done quite enough work for tonight. But I'd just as soon stay my full time. No, no, no. Won't pay to overwork the first day, you know. Here, Miss Billings, is your check. My check? Yes. You probably need a little money. Why, yes, but... No, no, no. Just case the check and get what you need with the money. But this check is made out for $80. Yes. I believe that was the amount... Wasn't it? Why, I... I don't understand. Would you mind going now, Miss Billings? The dawn will soon be here, and... Would you mind going now? I... I know what you wish. Thank you, my dear. And may I wish you every happiness, Miss Billings? Every happiness in the world. Good day now. Mary, wait for me. Oh, Mark, I've been waiting so long. I thought you weren't coming. Oh, Mary. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. I could hardly wait all day to hurry here and tell you the news. News? Yes. I've got a job, and a good one. $55 a week. Oh, Mark, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, and I got some swell ideas. I'm going to tell you one of them before long. Hey, how about your job? Well, I got it, Mark, but I don't know what to think about it. Everything was so strange. Yeah? What happened? Well... I went to the temple building, and I took the elevator up to the 13th floor. So, I took the check and left the building, just at the dawn was beginning to break. Hmm. That's odd. Very. Look, Mary, you have to go to work at midnight, you say. Do you mind if I go along? I know. I suppose it'll be all right. Good. I want to get a look at the kind of a businessman who'd have a 1912 calendar on his office wall. <laughs> That's some elevator, hmm? Yeah, push the button for yourself. <laughs> I guess they figure you cut down over here. Mm. No operator. <laughs> here we are. Mark. Hey. Are you sure you pushed the right button? I'm positive. But look at this place. 
Oh, I thought you said this entire floor was an office. Yes, it was. But now, there's nothing but one dim light. Heaps of junk and boxes and barrels and tubs here. But this floor isn't used for anything but storage space. But there were desks in it, lots of them, and people working. Oh, but Mary, there couldn't have been. Wait a minute. Mark, lying over there on the floor. Oh, let's see. There's something glittering over here. Hmm. That's a lipstick. Mark, it's my lipstick. What? Yes. Yeah. I missed it just after I left the building early this morning. I, I must have dropped it here while I was waiting for the elevator. Then, then what you told me did happen. Yes, Mark. I'm very certain of that. Very certain. Come inside a minute, Mark, will you? I want you to see the check the little man named Gibson made out to me. Yeah, I want to see it. There's something else I want you to look at. Something I had brought with me from home. Come in. You said this fellow Gibson had a City B newspaper on his desk. Yes. Dated April 16th, 1912. Well, you might not know it, but the B went out of business in this town 20 years ago. But, but the ink was fresh. And the paper. Any newspaper printed 30 years ago would have been yellow and faded. Yeah, that's true. Oh, is, is that the check? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. And for $80... Wait a minute. Do you notice this, Mary? The check's made out to Margaret Billings. Yes. I noticed that this morning, but I thought Mr. Gibson had just made a mistake. Now, I... I think I know the answer. You do? Say, what are these things in this little box? Your souvenirs? Yes, more or less. Here, there's lace handkerchief. That's lovely. It belonged to my mother. Her name was Margaret. Oh. Oh. See. And this is a portion of the diary she kept up to a year after I was born. Let's see, 1912. 10, 11. Here's 1912. What are you looking for, Mary? I'm not sure, Mark. February, March, April. Here, April. April 16th. Here we are. Well, Mary? Mark, listen. <laughs> Here's what my mother wrote in her diary on April 16th, 1912. Today, the Acme Office Supply Company on the 13th floor of the Temple Building declared bankruptcy. Forty-two employees were left without work. There was a month's pay due each of us. I went to Mr. Gibson, the owner, and asked for at least a portion of the money he owed me. But he said he was unable to pay a cent. He promised, however, to pay me the $80 he owed me just as soon as possible. This was bad news for me, indeed. Almost as bad as the news the headlines carried in the day's paper. The Titanic was sunk at sea on her maiden voyage. Dark fantasy. You have heard death from the past. A tale of dark fantasy starring that popular Hollywood actress, Jane Wyatt, and written especially for her by Scott Bishop. We wish to thank Miss Wyatt for her most ex excellent portrayal tonight of Mary Billings, and we join Jane Wyatt in urging you to do your bit toward the cause nearest to President Roosevelt's heart on his Diamond Jubilee. Give to your local Mile of Dimes committee. Ben Morris was heard tonight as Mark Matthew, Eleanor Naylor Curran was the office manager, and Muir Height played Mr. Gibson. Next Friday night at this same time, we'll bring you another unusual tale of dark fantasy, The Headless Dead. Miss Wyatt appeared tonight through the courtesy of the RKO Studios. Dark fantasy originates each Friday night in the studios of WKY, Oklahoma City. Tom Paxton speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>